Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 223, Stay Home and Tech Better. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we're here to help you tech better, even in these wild times. Here with me, virtually, as rarely, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, hello there. I see your little picture there on my computer screen. You look yes. bright and cheery in your studio at home. So yes, we are recording virtually because who knows? I have a cold, but it could be so much worse. So yes. there's no sense taking yes. a chance. We have quarantined Dave permanently. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking for replacement co-hosts right. just in case. I'm down uh, in this little hole. I can see light at the top of the hole. Yes. Well, hopefully the chains, the ball and chain don't make too much noise on the recording today. Yeah. I've uh, secluded myself into a far, far flung reaches of my lakeside mansion. So hopefully yes. nobody comes over and bothers me. Yes. Well, listeners, unless you are living under a rock, you can probably imagine there wasn't a ton of technology news this week, uh, but we do have a couple things. And as always, we wanted to come together and just talk through them. There is some tech related and some resources related to COVID-19 and everything going on. Uh, but we are in Oregon, which is yesterday, the bars and restaurants are shut down mm -hmm. for dine-in, and who knows how long this is going to go in. Go on, I should say. I can't even talk anymore <laughs> after this quarantine. Yes. Uh, we actually have some friends in town, a uh, wife's high school friend and her daughter. They've been staying with us the last couple of days from Northern California, so we have ventured out, but have been practicing very safe social distancing mm. while out and about. And now there is, they leave tomorrow morning, so there is very little left to do today around here due to the restrictions. But mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, as we know, this too shall pass, and this will help it pass faster with people being very safe. Yeah, I think they're working on uh, vaccines, they're uh, triaging and making sure they're testing and doing all this stuff. And so I think... Hopefully, if the medical professionals are doing everything that they can do, this will blow over soon. I hope. Yes, yes. Hope. And as long as people can stay calm and conserve your toilet paper, we should be fine. Yes. Uh, well, I do have a couple pieces of follow-up. There was this last week or two, there was a ton. Somebody got a hold of a beta build of iOS 14, which isn't coming out until the fall. And there was a ton of stuff that was found within that as far as new features coming and all these things. And one of the things I just wanted to briefly mention, because I'd rather just wait till it's here to talk about it, is we've been talking about the mirror.co and uh, what was that one last week? All these different fitness machines mm, for in yes, your home. Like, I, I can't remember the name of it. Yes, the Peloton uh, yeah, type of devices where you can it. train at home. Uh, well, one of the rumors is that Apple is developing a fitness app for iOS 14 that would allow you to download workouts and do all kinds of things like that. And uh, it is codenamed Seymour, <laughs> Seymour Butts. <laughs> Um, but yeah, fit or fitness when it's released. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out when they release that comparing to all these other, uh, services that seem to be hot right now. They're all pretty expensive, but if there's an app on your phone that gives you workouts and everything, uh, that could be pretty convenient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking forward to them, uh, integrating some new features into the watch, into the phone ecosystem. Uh, my Apple watch in comparison I've been having some issues with it uh -oh. and the uh, Apple store shutdown has not been helpful because yes. I wanted to just take it in there and say, Hey, but I tried a virtual thing and yeah. it was kind of neat. Just kind of a little sidestep. Uh, the Apple technician was able to do a diagnostic test remotely through my phone to my watch, which was cool. I had to go to a certain section oh, of my yeah, phone. Yeah. I'd never wow. done it before. She said, click this, do this. And, I did it. And I was like, I didn't even know this was in here. And, you know, 15 minutes later, it was done. And she said, there's nothing wrong with the battery on your watch. I'm like, I think mm. there is. <laughs> <clears throat> so what it's doing is it's charged at 100% and around 60%, it just dies. Oh, no. So I don't think it's reporting the right charge to begin yeah. with. And so I, I did the nuclear option and I unpaired it, erased it and started over again. And now it dies about 72%. 
So oh, that was actually less helpful. Although I think it's more accurate. Uh, Reads, oh, wow. Oh, that's a bummer. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, I'm unable to take it into the store because all the stores are closed. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. going to have to write it out, I think. Interesting. Well, hopefully you can survive with that. Yeah. First uh, world problems. Yes. One thing, I think we've done it each year. Spring is just around the corner and we usually wait till about May to actually bring ourselves to do it. But we like to do one episode a year where we kind of talk about how many apps we have on our phone and the possibility of doing a spring cleaning. Now, last year, I was trying to remember, we both had a lot of apps on our phone. I uh, think I have the number somewhere, but I think we pared it down to... What did we try to get to? Like 170, 150 or something like yeah, that last I th- year? Yeah, I was going to say 250, but maybe it was lower than that. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, so uh, let's, uh, and since we all have a little more time on our hands, we'll yeah. probably be using our phones a little more than we usually do. If you go into in uh, on your iPhone settings and then general and then about, it will give you, it might take a minute like it is on mine, but it gives you a, like the third section there, it gives you a bunch of different stats of the files you have on your phone, like songs, I have zero, mm-hmm. uh, videos, 1567. Wow. Photos, 33,076. Holy cow. And then comes the applications. Drum roll, please. All right. I currently have... 366 applications on my phone. Oof. That that is a lot, my friend. But yes. I'm afraid in this contest you are not the winner or maybe I'm the loser. <laughs> um, uh, just going down my list, I have zero songs also. Uh, I don't subscribe to Apple Music and you, apparently you don't download them to your device. No. <clears throat> videos, I have only 49 videos on mine because wow. I archive mine in Google Photos, so I don't keep them on my phone. Uh, 189 photos. Uh, applications. Oh, wow. <laughs> Drum roll, please. 491 applications on Ooh. my phone. And the great thing is, is I still have almost 70 gigabytes of space to put more applications on there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, 491. Got, uh, my, my pile of shame. I've still got 122 gigs free on my phone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 366. Now, I I know there's some apps that I don't use on my phone that I could probably offload, but I do have the space available, so that's not an issue. Finding apps, but most of the time now, I just use the spotlight where you pull down from the middle of the screen and start picking, or even the series suggestions of apps. It's usually the, con- the you know recent apps I use a lot. My front page, I keep pretty organized with probably the apps that I use the most, so I'm not having to swipe around. Now, I know we've gone over this in past years, and Dave, like how many pages of apps are you at right now? Oh boy, let's see here. Uh, there's my Can page you can't one. count that high in your current health state? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there are 14 pages, but I have Ooh. folders full of other apps. <laughs> Wow. So the 14 times the number of apps you can fit on the screen does not equal 491. So I have a bunch of folders. Like uh, on my, <clears throat> what I try to do is my main screen are the apps I use regularly. My second mm-hmm. screen is my Google screen. Every Google app is on there. Now I wow. could put those in a folder too to save yes. space. And then the next screen is all of my primary folders where I've got like uh, buy and sell, create my drone folder with all the drone apps eating, uh, finance, you know, on down the line, all the different Mm -hmm. categories of apps. Um, That's where the next one. And then the rest is just a hodgepodge of random stuff that needs to be organized. So I've got like over 10 or 11 pages to to organize. Uh, So typically how it gets this full is I like to evaluate applications and Mm -hmm. I'll download some free ones. I, you know, I listen to a bunch of different boards that say, Hey, this app is on sale or this app is for free or whatever. And so I download them to evaluate them. And then one, I never get around to evaluating them or two, I evaluate them and never delete them. So they just Uh, pile up. So that's, that's my problem. Yeah. So it's a good reminder. And what actually prompted me to think about doing this, one of the other rumors in iOS 14 is that they are, uh, I mean, really the way apps are organized hasn't 
change since the iPhone was released. And there's some hints that there will be a list view, much like you have on your watch. Now, that would be a very long list for you, mm -hmm. uh, but it does look like there might be some, uh, like recently used would be up at the top or serious suggestions. If you're near a McDonald's, that one might pop up near the list, uh, top of the list, stuff like that. Right. So uh, we will see with iOS 14, which will most likely be released in the fall, if that gives people another option. Uh, but yeah, I I don't know that I need to. There are a couple apps that I've downloaded, much like you, where it's like, oh, I want to check this out, and I haven't gotten around to checking them out yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, uh, you just kind of have to evaluate it for yourself. If it is something that causes you stress or, uh, you know, is just gotten to be too much for you, maybe it's time to, to pare it down a little bit and see, see well, what's going on. And now that most of us have a little more free time, since we're not out and about going to events, maybe I should go through and just kind of test out some of these apps and delete a few. Yeah. It's just a couple a day. So what is our target? What do we want to get down to? What do you think is the sure. optimal number of apps for a phone. I mean, it's going to be different for different people, but what yeah. would you say is the maximum number of apps a person should have on their phone? Man, that is that is tough. And I know we talked about it uh, last year. I should have gone back to listen to the, our discussion on it. But, you know, it's like with my PDX Fast Foodie, I have a folder of just like fast food apps with, you know, their yeah. ordering or what it, deals and coupons and stuff like that. Um, so they can add up. I just don't know... Like, again, my photos apps, I've got it down to four pages within the folder. Uh, so, you know, there's 30-some apps in there. Which of those photos apps do I use? There's some that – here's the problem. There's photo apps that I aspire to use. It's like, oh, this yeah. has really cool features. I could do some great things with this. I just open the camera app, take a picture, and then go into the – the photos app is so – much better now with the editing capabilities. Yeah, it's so, very capable these days. So I don't know what, I don't know if there is a number. Is there a number? Does it matter how many apps? Obviously, if you're low on space, uh, you could delete some bigger apps. You know, a lot of games will be bigger. So if you do go into your settings and general, and then you go to iPhone storage, it will calculate and show you where all your storage is being taken up. Uh, Photos is using quite a bit. And then Spotify, I do have music downloaded within Spotify. And Pocket Cast is my bigger one. It's populating as we look. Right. But like Call of Duty, which I have not played in a while. I was enjoying it. It is two gigs just for the game. You said uh, duty. So, duty. If you are looking for some space on your phone, this might be a good place to look if you don't want to delete your pictures and that kind of thing. There are some very... there's. <laughs> Live DV is 1.14 gigabytes, and it says it's never been used. I don't know if I used that on a previous phone or not, but yeah, uh, yeah so it's just a, a good reminder. While, while things are uh, in a state of change in our lives, maybe take some time, clean up your phone a little bit. Do you think there is a, a number, or does it just depend on the person? Like, I think it depends on the person, but probably... Any phone with over 300 apps, probably you're not using all those apps, I would say. <laughs> you're not probably, regularly using. Yes, yeah. there's probably a good chance. And now with, uh, you know, data as good as it is, Wi-Fi everywhere, it, we aren't with, most of us are not without internet too often. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like, oh, I got to have that app on my phone in case I'm somewhere without service. In that case, yeah, maybe you do need some more apps, but you could always download an app again. So do, yeah. you, do you want to try to pare down your number, Dave? Do you think that that would be healthy for you? It'd probably be healthy for me to pare it down just as an exercise of not having all of this stuff I have to wade through every time I want to find something. And it's yeah. always good, like you mentioned with those photo apps, is to try to hone in on the one, two, three, four, or five that you're going to use regularly and get rid of the rest because... Again, it's just, it's a distraction if they're there and you're like, oh, maybe I'll use this or not. To have a minimalistic, uh, lean uh, working environment can be <clears throat> really helpful for a lot of people. Yes, I think uh, there are many professionals that would agree is having too much clutter, kind of twofold, if it kind of creates anxiety because you have so many apps on your phone and you just don't even know where to go, or, and the other, if it 
uh, creates a problem because you can't find the app that you're looking for because mm -hmm. you have too many apps on there. I think those could bo both be healthy measures. So uh, I wrote down our app total. So maybe we'll revisit it next week and see uh, what, what we came to peace with yeah. on uh, how to organize our phones. Well, and it is hard. I could say, you know, I think I could get down to 100 apps and be happy with that. Oh, yeah, but, you but can you, survive. But you've got to remember that Apple includes like 20 apps. And if you yeah. have all the Google apps, that's another 20 apps. And so I'm almost halfway to my 100 just by uh, Google services and the built-in apps. And so 100 uh, is probably not very realistic for me, but I yes. would say somewhere like in the 250 range. So I don't know. I think I think my goal is I'm going to try to get down, I'm going to delete 100 apps off of my phone. So to wow. get down to, to 391. 391. Yeah. Okay. And I'll see what I can do. I need to go through. There's some that I probably, some that I have not used since last year when we did this. Uh, so <laughs> I could probably delete. I should have yeah. taken a screenshot or made a list of all the apps I had a year ago and then go in and look again and say, I haven't used these. If I put them all in one folder, I, there's not an easy way to see uh, when you it tries to give you some information, but since I have a different phone than last year, it's kind of hard to tell that sometimes. We should try to do a challenge sometime where I tell you what apps you can use and you tell me what apps I can use <laughs> for like a week and see if we can oh, get by. Yes. And yeah. of course, it is a little different for us because for one, we do this lovely podcast and try to provide a service to you listeners by telling you about apps and that sort of thing. And our jobs both require us to have more yes. apps than the average person. That is correct. And you know what else is also great? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. You know, Nate, at work, people have been coming from everywhere trying to figure out how to do virtual meetings because yes. they've never had to do them before. Maybe they yeah. did something with you know, someone across the country, like an interview or something like that. But when it's your team trying to communicate uh, remotely, what do you do if you don't have something already in place? And so today I thought we could talk about some of the options in the virtual meeting space that are out mm -hmm. there. Now, the first and foremost, I would say, you and I are using it right now, and that is Zoom Meeting. Uh, it's just zoom.com, I think, is the, the website. Zoom.us. Oh, zoom.us. Mm -hmm. Yes, my mistake. So Zoom is a great technology, and we've talked about them before because there was this kind of uh, uh, scandal where they yes. were uh, leaving some ports open on people's computers that nefarious people could have utilized to get into your computer. But that's all been fixed. On their free tier, you can have up to 100 different people connect to a Zoom meeting, and it works as expected. You can use your built-in camera on your laptop, or you can use a third-party camera that you plug into the back. Uh, the audio is nice and clear and goes through well. And what's great also is, like Nate and I, we can record both channels so that if later we wanted to synchronize the audio or if we wanted to record the video and play it back later, we certainly could. And so it's a very full-featured and professional video conferencing solution. Well, let's say you don't want to be that professional or you have other needs and uh, you want alternatives. Another great alternative, uh, look no further than Google. Google has Hangouts. And yep. over the years, they have added and subtracted many of their video conferencing tools. <laughs> There's like Ello and oh. I, I don't... I can't Hello, even remember. Allo, Ulo. Yeah, all their different things. But they've pretty much settled on Google Hangouts. And this is free to use if you have a Gmail account. And you can connect multiple people. In my experience, it works quite well depending on the Wi-Fi capabilities of the people connecting. You may experience some dropouts or some video frame rate issues. But for the most part, it works really well. Yeah. And it's free and easy to use. And you can get an iPhone app and put it on there <clears throat> so that you can do it mobily. And then there's kind of the big brother that pretty much started this all a number of years ago. It has recently been purchased by Microsoft. And that is Skype. Skype is the granddaddy of video conferencing. And I'm not sure what all free tier features that they have. Like, I don't know how many different people can connect on the free tier. But if you just want to go one person to another person and you both have uh, Skype accounts, it is super simple to use. You can do desktop computer sharing with it. You can uh, chat like a typing text message in addition to the audio video. Uh, you can share files back and forth. It's really a robust platform uh, for doing video conferencing. I'm also going to mention that 
for most iPhone users, FaceTime. Yeah. Uh, I used it this morning with our friend Tyler. He was at work. I was at home. We FaceTimed. It worked well. The quality was good. It's very simple. Now, recently, Apple has increased the number of users that you can do a FaceTime connection with. And I can't remember what it is. Is it uh, 32? Is that the number? I think so. I think so. The group FaceTime. Yeah. I've Now, honestly, I've not tried it with more than just one person. Have you done multiple people in a FaceTime chat before? I have not on FaceTime. I've seen it done, but uh, yeah, I haven't had any need for that, but it is a good option. I will uh, jump in real quick. You did mention some real-time follow-up that Microsoft recently bought Skype. That was 2011 when that deal went through. So recent is a relative term. Yes, uh, Skype though was founded a number of years before that. So yes, but yeah. you're right. It it Microsoft has had it for quite a while, and they've done a good job integrating it into all their other platforms. So yeah, I think yeah. they've been good stewards of it so far. They've no, made some I changes agree. that made some people upset initially, but I think they've really developed it into a very solid platform. So yes. Nate, what are your preferences when we talk about all these uh, video conferencing? What What is your list of uh, the best to worst? Yes. Well, I will uh, also throw in, especially for the one-to-one type stuff, I will not make you mention it, but Facebook does have within their messenger video capabilities. Mm-hmm. And I will say I use Skype the chat function on a daily basis, but the video function probably about once a week. One of the uh, projects that I'm working on, the guy that I'm working with, we work through Skype. It seems to work uh, well for that. Zoom, I think I made it a pick of the week too. Yeah, uh, you did. Previously. And it is, I have done uh, webinars with over 50 people for some training that I've done, multiple of them. You can record it all for, I think Zoom would be my choice for the business type mm-hmm. uh, experience. But then, you know, FaceTime is great, but not everybody has an Apple device. Right. Uh, so the Google Hangouts, uh, I know we use that with some family members that don't have it. Skype, I, they're all, they all work well. They have gotten so much better. And I, I think for me, it's just important. The face-to-face is so much more helpful. I'm trying to do more video meetings for work and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've used Google Hangouts. I was having two meetings a week with one of my clients uh, over Google Hangouts. And uh, that worked well also. So just getting some face-to-face, if you're working remotely, those people that you're used to seeing every day, you get so much more when you do a video meeting. And if it is just keeping in touch with family, if you're, you know, we're not supposed to be doing that, we're not supposed to be going out, just get on a video chat. I mean, text messaging is okay, but... Uh, To really have that interaction, I think there's something valuable there, and there's so many good options for it now. Uh, And some of our our stories will actually uh, reinforce this pro tip of the week of uh, all these different options for video chat. But you've got those... What are those? I mean, basically, the five big companies have an option there. Zoom's not really one of the you know a major company, but they sure are right now because yeah, of, they are uh, everybody working from home. I only hear good things uh, f- about Zoom ever since they had that one little flub and uh, they got it taken care of, and everybody is really singing the praises of Zoom. Yeah, we're going to move on to our takes of the week, which uh, actually are pretty well related to what we were just talking about. As I mentioned, the first one is that um, I think, well, at least on the West Coast, schools have been canceled for quite a while and spring break time and they're just adding weeks before and after that. Uh, But the Zoom CEO is giving K-12 schools video conferencing for free. So they do have the basic level of Zoom and then they do have, if you have larger groups, I guess a classroom is probably not going to be, I think you were saying before we started recording, up to 100 people on a meeting for free right now. Most of our takes today are nice moves uh, that people are doing to kind of help out uh, through this. And it's kind of cool to see as people are coming together and kind of trying to all come up with solutions uh, to get us through this hopefully temporary time. Yeah, it's this, this whole crisis has really revealed how unprepared people are to do remote stuff. We're so yeah. used to being in the same physical space where I work, everybody's trying to scramble and figure out how do we deliver content? How do we 
interact as a staff so that we can continue to do meetings and planning if we're not presently in the same area. And so it's been a challenge and it's been very revealing just how unprepared most people are. And schools, for example, I live in the Sherwood School District and they seem utterly unprepared for any type of online teaching. And of course, for years, I've been complaining to myself, not to the to the school board, but to myself saying, why are all the books on the Chromebooks that you're issuing kids? Why do they have to carry 50 pound books around? Why not give them an iPad with all the books on there? I mean, they're the, these things have been available and they're actually not cost prohibitive. I know you have to have a special budget to do those things, but it's actually doable, but online and virtual stuff as well. When a student is sick why not give them the opportunity to participate from their home if they have a home computer set up? And if you're yeah. giving the kids Chromebooks anyway, they're taking a computer home with them. But no, they have to skip school and make up the work. Um, it'd be really nice if they could just sit and watch uh, from home if they're you know awake and able yes. to. That might yeah. be an option. Or even a student who is traveling. Um, let's say you're on vacation and you left a couple days early and you really don't want to miss the lecture of a class. Well, in your hotel room, why not offer the student an option to connect remotely? And I know some people might take advantage and abuse that, but if you put in policies in place where you have to plan ahead and you have to get permission and do all this stuff, then I can see it being a a real value. And so maybe in the future, we're going to see stuff like that where virtual learning is just the regular option. Yeah, well, and we, you know, we've seen a lot with colleges and stuff like that, and a lot of them are moving to full, fully online now. And so I think, uh, of course, this will pass, and we will put all these preparations in place, and then hopefully we won't have anything like this again for a long time, and then the technology will have all changed again. That's part of the problem. How much money? It's like in Oregon where we get snow one day a year. Uh, how many snow plows can you invest in when you only need them for one day a year? Yeah. Uh, so you run into some of that sort of stuff. But uh, it is nice to see that some of these companies are trying to help these schools uh, navigate this this craziness. Yeah. Uh, and another thing that we didn't mention before on the video conferencing stuff, one of the things you need is a good or at least decent internet connection. That meeting, those weekly meetings I mentioned before, uh, one of the guys is in Northern California, a little bit rural and just has the worst internet connection. So he'll just freeze up for a minute at a time. Uh, and this wouldn't necessarily help him, but several of the major internet providers in the U.S. have offered either free Wi-Fi or removing data caps. Uh, so like T-Mobile's removing the data mm-hmm. caps on their service. Yeah, my kids uh, have enjoyed that. They're like, oh, free unlimited. <laughs> yes, go for it. And Comcast, uh, it's not often that we talk about them in a positive note. They are offering free public Wi-Fi for 60 days. So you uh, will often see, especially if you're a Comcast customer, when you're out and about the Xfinity Wi-Fi that shows up in your Wi-Fi list. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, even if you are not a customer of Comcast Xfinity, you can still use their hotspots. Now, one of the articles I read said it was just for the public one, so it, not everybody's house that... It's kind of complicated, but your router broadcasts your home Wi-Fi and then completely separate is this Xfinity Wi-Fi, uh, which a lot of people turn off, but at least for the business ones, so out and about business internet, if they have that. Like if you're walking by Starbucks and you see the Starbucks, but you also see the Xfinity Wi-Fi, you could potentially connect to that Xfinity Wi-Fi for free. Yes. Uh, So several of the companies are doing that. So if you do need internet connection, there are some options for that. And if you have any questions, just let us know. Verizon's also doing a moratorium on late fees and disconnections. Uh, T-Mobile, as we mentioned, unlimited smartphone data to all current subscribers and increase the data allowance to schools and students using their digital learning programs. Uh, Cox is doing something as well. So um, that is a helpful thing because as we are stuck at home, the internet becomes ever more important. Yes. Yes, it is. And uh, you mentioned it before, the Apple retail stores have 
And interestingly enough, all the ones in China are now back open, but the rest of the world, they've closed all their retail stores, so they are really working hard to provide good options. Now, there have been some rumors they might even, as soon as this week, announce some new products. There were some new Beats headphones, but I don't really count those. But they have a strong online presence, and like you said, you can call into their support and they can remote in. There's a lot they can do without having their um, stores open. Now, they had originally said, I believe, through the end of the month, Month, and uh, they are now on their website. It says closed until further notice. Right. Um, that has been one of my questions in this whole thing where uh, announcements are made that we're closing for one month, we're closing for two months. And it's like, well, can we take this two weeks at a time? Uh, can we can we go two weeks and see if that makes a difference and then make some decisions instead of, you know, just closing down like the, our friend that's visiting, she's a teacher. And they had said before that she came up here that uh, they were at this week was their spring break, um, but that they're, they're going to close for a month. And talking to other teachers, they're like, well, I'd go to Hawaii or something, but what if in two weeks they tell us that we have to be back? So it's kind of hard to plan, but that's yeah. my own personal beliefs. And uh, I'm sure there are people that disagree with me, including uh, the people making these decisions that have done a lot more research than I have. So I'll be quiet and move on to the next one, which even though the Apple stores are closed, Apple made another announcement that their Apple card, the credit card, which I have one of, uh, they will allow customers to skip a payment and not have any interest charges due to the coronavirus. Uh, so this is, uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of this. There's been calls for everything from rent to taxes, everything uh, where we can just kind of pause for a month, uh, much like we're having to pause our lives. Yeah. Um, the problem with pausing our lives a lot of times is that means there's not as much money coming in. And uh, so there are many efforts to try to help that. But the Apple Card is one that I saw. That's pretty cool. Yeah, the last take I have here, there are a lot of these things popping up, um, but there somebody had made a Google Sheet. They have now moved it to a website because the Google Sheet kept crashing because so many people were accessing it. But it is just a major list of educational resources. Uh, it's just basically a spreadsheet that goes on and on forever of free resources that have been made free for education, educational type apps. Uh, so you can go in there click the link in the uh, show notes and go through there and f just find some cool stuff to add this another vast, hundred apps vast, to your vast list. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Uh, and there are some people that are kind of monitoring it and help add to it. Um, but there is just a little bit of everything. So if you have children or if you need to brush up on your uh, elementary education a little bit, now would be the time to do so with all these free offerings. Yeah, I see uh, here a dog on a log books. You can get down there. You go. Printable. That's, oh, from, there it is. Yeah, I'm dog that on a now. log, whatever that is. So yeah, many many good resources. Yes. So that is a good thing. You know what is not going anywhere? Our security and privacy stories. Uh, the first one should be no surprise to anyone. The uh, CIA. They have through the WikiLeaks. Um, trials. Uh, there's a CIA employee standing trial for leaking the WikiLeaks Vault 7 CIA hacking mm. tools. Oh my. And the Schneier on security, who is always a good read, he pulled some of the things out of there to show what kind of security the CIA was using for things. The password for the Confluence virtual machine that held all the hacking tools that were stolen and leaked the password was one two three A B C D E F. Oh boy, that's a that's a good one there. Yes, and the root login for the main DevLand server, my sweet summer, all lowercase. Wow. Yes, and he it goes on to say it actually gets worse than that. Those passwords were shared by the entire team and posted on the group's intranet. IRC chats published during the trial even revealed team members talking about how terrible their InfoSec information security practices were mm -hmm. and joked that CIA internal security would go nuts if they knew. 
Their justification, the intranet was restricted to members of the operational support branch, the elite programming unit that makes the CIA's hacking tools. I, wow. Whenever I hear the word government-level security or government-level encryption, I always chuckle a little bit because we keep hearing about how sometimes the government, even the CIA, that would be central intelligence agency uh, has some poor security practices. Oh, yes. You're only as secure as your weakest password. Yes. Uh, and we had something good to say about Comcast, so now I <laughs> have to share something bad. Uh, they accidentally published a list of 200,000 phone numbers of people that were paying 350 a month to keep their number private. Uh-huh. So a number privacy list was leaked out and people... <laughs> I want a refund. Uh, I want a yes. refund of every bit of that money. That is crazy. Yeah. Names, phone numbers, and addresses of nearly 200,000 customers who paid monthly fees to make their numbers unlisted. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it never <laughs> ends. Uh, and this is one that you found, and I read through it a little bit, didn't read all the nitty gritty, but f the headline, of course, to grab attention, famous iOS apps are snooping on the pasteboard. Yeah, th the idea is, is you go into an application, let's say LastPass, and you say, copy my password to the pasteboard so that I can paste it into the web browser window to log in. Well, some applications are snooping in the pasteboard and taking that information and doing whatever they are with it. So potentially, these applications could be stealing both your login and your password information, depending on how uh, intelligent they are or what they're doing. Or let's say, I don't know, you you have text messages and you're copying and pasting uh, information from one text message to another. That's potential information that these applications could be stealing. So let's see what they talked about. Yeah. So there's, they kind of put it out into categories. So under the news category, you have ABC, Algeria, Al Jazeera, uh, CBC, CNBC, Fox News, New York Times, NPR, Newsbreak. So basically everything, the top news apps. And they were looking at top lists and then it goes on to other ones as well. Uh, games, there's a bunch of games. I mean, Fruit Ninja, Classic Bejeweled and Classic Bejeweled HD and regular Bejeweled. Now, it, it, I don't know that they necessarily found that any of these uh, social networking TikTok, Viber, uh, trying to pick out some of the ones that people have heard of. Bed Bath & Beyond. <clears throat> what is Zeusk? I don't know. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dave's going to... We should never talk about a list of apps on the podcast because Dave's going to go get some more now. I'm going to go get um, them all. We don't know that they were necessarily using this for anything. I mean, apps do need to have pasteboard capabilities, like you were saying, to be able to paste stuff in. I've used apps where it wouldn't let me copy or paste things. And I'm like, I, what? Come on. Yeah, let me do let it. Let me yeah. do this. So it, it is something uh, I'm sure Apple is well aware of this and looking at ways to avoid this. But the, um, some of the things that are that don't make sense are like some of the games. Like why yeah. would this pool, uh, you know, billiards game need access to the pasteboard? Like what it... You're not inputting text into a game at any at, at any point in many of these games that they list, like PUBG Mobile from Tencent, which I will say is a Chinese company. So yes. maybe they're nefariously trying to steal information from the U.S. Who knows? But it's crazy. So the lesson here is anything on your phone, online, anywhere, it's just not secure. You just yep. you just have to go out and accept that anything you publish anywhere has the potential to be taken. Yes. Uh, and it's an unfortunate thing, but that's where we're at in yes. today's age. I will mention once you get through the very long article and list of apps and past a bunch of ads and the tabula weird, crazy ads, the very last sentence that separated out from everything else says, however, it is not clear what the apps do with the data. To prevent apps from exploiting the pasteboard, Apple must act. Uh, so they didn't really find anything nefarious. They just found that this there is this ability and Apple should try to look at how they can control it, which I agree with. Our bonus odd take of the week. Ba -da -ba -ba. 
since we do have so much time at home, I've seen a couple different posts on virtual museum tours, and I think we might have talked about uh, some last week. I found one. It is a five-plus-hour, one-take video of a Russian museum all shot on iPhone. Yes, it's amazing. Now, I did not watch through all of this. I did uh, skim through it. It is pretty impressive. It looks amazing, uh, but five plus hours. I did see a comment on one of the posts. It was like, oh, you can tell it's shot on an iPhone with all the compression and blah, 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 but nobody's going to notice that. Uh, somebody's got to find a problem with everything. But if you're looking to uh, pass five, like five and a half hours uh, looking at a museum, you, it's on YouTube on Apple's channel. So this is like the ultimate shot on iPhone video, promo video, but it is pretty cool. At least go take a look at it and uh, check out just what somebody was able to do with an iPhone uh, and five hours of time. Yes. It is amazing that this video is so long. It's incredible. <laughs> yes. You I know, scrubbed adults, through it. <laughs> yeah. You know what else is amazing? Our picks of the week. Now, I might be getting into trouble for kind of repicking this item, but I've been using it recently and I found it to be quite useful. So mm -hmm. back in October, uh, I bought the Echo Dot with Clock and, oh, yeah. and I gave it to a friend and it has since come back into my fold of products. Nice. Uh, and so I set it up in my room. This is just like the Echo Dots you know and love. You've seen them all around. But this has a built-in clock that kind of lives behind the fabric that's wrapped around uh, the third generation mm. Echo Dots. And I just wanted to say, having that clock there is so helpful. Yeah, You look across the room, you look at the time, you don't have to ask her what time it is. I mean, it's just one of those things that just makes sense. Now, unfortunately, it's only available in the sandstone color. I wish that they would add a few more colors oh, yeah. uh, options. But Echo Dot, we've picked it before. We've talked about it before. But if you are in the market to get a new one, I would recommend springing for the extra. I don't even know if they cost extra. Let me check here real quick. Uh, yeah, they're $10 extra for the one that has the built-in clock. And like I said, it only comes in the white sandstone type color, so that may not fit your aesthetics. But it's super useful to just look across the room, see the time. It eliminates having to have an alarm clock in yes. your room displaying the time. So the Echo Dot with clock. Nice. Clocks are useful. Uh, my pick of the week, now off the podcast, uh, friend of the show, Todd, has recently also purchased a 16-inch MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. which includes the touch bar, and we've been helping him with various things as he moves to this new world of computing and the touch bar. And I was listening to another podcast, and I, I wish I used the touch bar more. I just forget because I'm so used to my workflow and using the keyboard and the trackpad and everything. There are some useful things. Well, I found a very useful little free utility for the touch bar, and it is called POCK, P-O-C-K. And now what this does is it basically takes your dock you know, the either on the side or the bottom of your Apple computer where you have all your applications, your open stuff, and puts them all in the touch bar. So you can just simply click on whatever. You can customize things. You can add things. You can subtract things. But I've been playing it around with it some, and it is just a really nice free little utility, something different to do with the touch bar. I looked at some other app or articles for, you know, helpful touch bar apps, and it was like, there's one where it'll do the little uh, Knight Rider red light oh, yeah, or cool. the Google when the internet disconnected the little dinosaur game. There's some very playful things, uh, but this is, it's open source. It's a really great little utility. I've actually hidden my dock now on my computer, so I have more room on a little more more room on my screen, and then I can just control all my apps from down in the touch bar. That sounds really cool. And as a desktop computer user, it makes me want to uh, spur Apple on to developing the touch bar in the Bluetooth wireless keyboard. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have talked about that. If you could have that touch bar experience on an external keyboard, then uh, desktop users could do fancy things like this as well. 
Yes. Yeah. Cause uh, and even a lot, of, I'm at my desk most of the time and a lot of people that have a desk set up with external monitors or whatever, they'll use an external keyboard. Mm-hmm. I just use an external mouse with my normal keyboards. So it's not for everybody, but it is a nice little option. You can always start it up. I was wondering if when I installed it, if I was going to have to do a reboot and a bunch of weird stuff. Nope. You just download the application. You start it. It pops on there. You can quit the application and go back. That's uh, amazing. If, yeah. If you have a touch bar, check out POC and we'll have a link in the show notes. Our Amazon purchase of the week. Uh, I did see an article that Amazon's hiring like 100,000 more employees. Yeah. They're becoming very vital in this time of uh, not going out to the stores. And, and surprisingly, I haven't ordered anything on Amazon since this whole shutdown. Yeah. Normally, I'm ordering stuff once a week, so I need to get on the train. Yes, you do. Well, maybe this will be something you would like to purchase. Uh, we are Amazon affiliates, and we love looking through the anonymous reports of what you guys are buying to support us through that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. But this week, I found, and maybe this was you, Dave, before the lockdown, this is the Rev Jams 31-piece cleaning kit for Apple AirPods Pro AirPods 2 includes exclusive safe antibacterial cleaning solution, microfiber cloth, safe brushes, dust stickers, swabs, and more improved. Wow. No, so, that was not me. Yes. And I, I know, Dave, that uh, you have have thought about, even worked on it, creating a video for cleaning yeah. your AirPods. I have uh, pondered for multiple years and have just not gotten around to recording it. But what this is, is you get a kit. There's some, this premium cleaner. There's some, they almost, it's a cross between, it looks like a Q-tip, an arrow, maybe one of those little plastic dental pick things, then mm. some little tiny brushes, some little stickers for getting gunk out, uh, some antibacterial cleaning wipes, and then a cloth. I don't know that you would necessarily need this, but it does look like there are some good tools for doing this. And well, I'm going to... with the current crisis, I might have to change my strategy because one of my strategies is to tear off a little corner of toilet paper oh. and rub around in there and... It's at such a premium, I'm not sure I can afford to clean my headphones with toilet paper these days. It needs to clean other areas, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, and since we are not in the same room, Dave, I just texted you a picture of this to ask, what would you pay for this? Well, this is neat. Like you said, it's got all the, it looks like a makeup kit, honestly. Yes. It really looks like a makeup kit. I'm going to say this thing is like $9.99 for this kit. Pretty close. Eleven ninety nine mm. is the current price on yep. Amazon. Uh, it is available ver- via Prime. It looks like it was at ten dollars for a while. It's been around since May of two thousand seventeen. So this is not a new product. Yeah. I've I've seen some other. Uh, there's some startup that's trying to do like the ultimate AirPod cleaning kit that, but it's like forty bucks or something. This is could be a nice little simple thing if you need to clean up your AirPods. Uh, I recently. Did a deep cleaning on mine because the right AirPod was super quiet. And I will stand by my thing that the uh, sucking on your AirPod (laughs) is what makes the difference. Uh, Uh, So disgusting. It is. It is. Uh, But that worked. Well, since we're on this topic, the thing I've been doing most recently is taking foaming hand soap and taking a little bit of foaming hand soap on my fingertip, putting it on the little wire mesh stuff. Mm-hmm. Holding the AirPod upside down so it doesn't leak into my AirPod. Just waiting a couple seconds and then getting a uh, Q-tip or a corner of toilet paper, like I said, at a premium these days, and gently wiping and removing the hand soap. And it'll bring along with it all kinds of earwax and gross things. And so that's my preferred method. But yes, I do occasionally have to suck on my AirPod just to make sure there's good airflow coming through there. Yes, yes. Okay, well, with that, we are going to wrap up this episode of the Not Nerd Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Share it with a friend. We've all got a little more time on our hands, most likely, unless you have small, multiple small children, then your time is uh, a little different now. But uh, yeah, listen to the podcast, share it with a friend, and take care of yourselves. Now, stay home and tech better. You know what else is also always correct? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. Oh, yeah. Picks and, and Tips of the Week. I kind of forgot about those. Shoot. 
Um, let me get my list here. Um, do we know anything about fake news? <laughs> 